All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night here from Tokyo, Japan. Here, coming to you uh, every day like an atomic clock, as Ivan on Tech would say. But um, yeah, not like an atomic clock, you know, but uh, we're getting there. It's all good. So I hope you all are doing well wherever you are. Hope everything is going smooth. Today, we got a pretty good episode um, going. And actually, the reason why I'm on StreamYard today is because I will be allowing live call-ins. I'll be putting the link uh, to invite you guys if you, anybody wants to join the stream. Or you can do it with your video or you can just do it with your audio. Either is okay. We'll probably be doing that towards the middle to end of the show. So we'll get through our meme of the day first, then get into the altcoins and the Bitcoin price, and then we'll get into the subject. And during the subject, I'll allow uh, anybody who wants to come on to come on. And we can actually hash this subject out together because I think there might be a variety of opinions in the house about this subject, which is Bitcoin will do better than the S&P 500 in 2020. So you heard it here correctly. And it's not like the most bold prediction if you're aware of Bitcoin. But for those people who, you know, are skeptical of Bitcoin, they probably uh, are, you know, a little bit skeptical of this claim as well. So we'll talk about the uh, data points and reasons for that as well. So we got Trophy Dolphin jumping in the house or uh, Voice My Ambition. Nice to see you jumping in here. Got Steven Robinson coming at you deep from the <laughs> Kut Kutene Mountains. Is that how you pronounce it? Interesting. I, le I like the picture too. You look like you're in the mountains. It's good. Uh, Simon Benson in here. Keep calm and huddle on. Uh, Luca in the house. What up, peeps? And uh, Angelo Ichiban San or Ichiban Angelo San saying, Moon Giddy Giddy Gang. I can't even say it like a. What's that guy's name? I forgot it, the character's name on uh, Family Guy, but Moon Giggity Gang. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Good morning. We are live. <laughs> Not from New York, from Tokyo. So let's jump in it today and let's get to the memes first because we always love the memes. And I'm actually going to try a test with StreamYards because I am using OBS on StreamYards. So I think, yeah, exactly. Look at Quagmire. That's what I was looking for. Uh, that character's funny as hell. So what I'm going to try to do here is see if this works. It's a different technical setup than I do on Moon Gang. Yeah, you can see me into infinity, baby, and your comments on the screen. But looks like this should be correctly uh, put out here now. Anyways, I showed you guys this meme on Tuesday. It's more of a picture than it is a meme, but I showed you guys this on Tuesday. And what were we talking about? I also, I also showed anybody who is watching the Tokyo Crypto Show on Wednesday as well. And on the Tokyo Crypto Show, we told you guys that Bitcoin uh, and the S&P 500 will go down very soon. Less than two days later, it's gone down. And it's going to continue at least towards the end of this month, in my opinion. But anyways, this picture here, you have the tornado, which was the coronavirus crisis, everything crashing. Then you have this mythical V-shaped recovery, right? The S&P came back roaring, you know, with all the stocks might, but it's not going to end like the rainbow usually does. There is no pot of gold at the end of this rainbow. It's not all sunshine, skittles and happiness, all this stuff. Uh, you know, you try to find that pot of gold. It might be pretty elusive at this point in time, but there is further downside to go. Like me and John were talking about on the Tokyo Crypto Show on Wednesday. And like I was talking about on this show on Tuesday. So... We're going, that kind of leads me to the topic today as well, which is, okay, so a lot of people are thinking the S&P uh, and Bitcoin are highly correlated. So we'll go through some of that data and show, actually, there are times when they are not correlated. There are times when they are correlated. So how will that play out towards the end of this year? In my opinion, I think Bitcoin will have a larger uh non-correlation with the S&P and traditional markets once we get towards the later half of this year, even though right now they are highly correlated. So this will be an interesting kind of experiment, you know, for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because it jumps back and forth between correlation and non-correlation with traditional markets. And also after the halving supply is reduced, uh, we'll see what happens with that. And then also we're in an economic crisis. So this is a pretty amazing or interesting time globally when it comes to the you know financial system. This is something that has not happened in an extremely long time. I mean, if you're just talking about recessions, right, this hasn't happened in you know about a decade. But if you're talking about 
uh, large recessions, right? It's been uh, several decades and a lot of these things, you know, uh, well, basically all of these recessions in the past have not happened with Bitcoin in them. So this is a brand new asset class experiencing its first um, crazy amount of volatility basically here. So uh, very interesting stuff indeed for 2020. Next one here, <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants. We've got, uh, what's this guy's name again? Patrick? Yeah, I think it's Patrick. Got Patrick here. Uh, just uh, looking at the stock market. Oops going into the toilet. It's not there yet, of course. And I'm not here to disparage the stock market only. You know, I do, you know, let, want the stock market to do well because that would mean the entire co economy is doing very well uh, or at least, you know, uh, not crashing. So I'm not here to, you know, just say shit on the stock market because it's fine. You know, hopefully it does well. But in all honesty, we just tell it how it is here. And the next one here, let's see. <laughs> you can actually look at this meme and you can do this meme in any direction, right? Omnidirectional memeage, uh, which is a first here on the on the uh, Cultivate Crypto show. So for the omnidirectional memeage, let's go for the, I guess, what's been happening recently, right? So we had 9,500 Bitcoin. Not so great, not so bad, pretty good, right? Then we had $9,800 Bitcoin. Oh, feels a little bit better. Oh, then we had $10,000 Bitcoin, but Bitcoin said, nope. Sorry, I'm going to reject you here like Shaq does to everybody who tries to go to the rim. And then we're back here between 9,000 and 9,500 Bitcoin. Meh, meh, you know. So this is kind of the, the little bit of a roller coaster here. But for people in cryptocurrency, we've gotten used to the $9,000 range region. So not that many emotions, unless you're very brand new to crypto and you're like, holy crap, it just moved $500 in a couple of hours. That's pretty normal for Bitcoin. Uh, next one here. <laughs> Well, let's go to the moon. Well, it depends on which point of view you're taking a look at here. We can get to the moon all sorts of different ways, I guess. But uh, it is what it is. And we got Greg jumping in the house. Uh, crash, baby, crash. So maybe this is Greg's version of going to the moon. Uh, just totally depends on how you look at us in space and time. All right. So let's take a look before we get into the subject today. Uh, let's take a look at the altcoins and see how the altcoins are doing. And like I told you guys before, I will open up the phone lines. We can debate this topic a little bit and we have plenty of data that I will be showing um, to talk about this subject as well because it's a pretty interesting one in my opinion and will change throughout this year. But let's take a look at the altcoins first and see what's happening over here in the altcoin space. And actually, do, 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 yeah, I think that's actually, let's try this actually again. Go back here. I just want to see one thing. Okay. Yeah, this is running how I want it to run. Sweet. Back into infinity and beyond. <laughs> so uh, looking here at the uh, altcoins, really, I'll just refresh this page because I, I think I refreshed it like 20 minutes ago or something. Not too much happening in the crypto world in terms of high volatility. It's pretty minimal volatility. But once we get to the Bitcoin price today, I will tell you why the price jump down recently has been quite important for most of the market. I think it signals a, a downturn for a decent period of time is the main reason. Uh, MLD jumping in the house. Uh, you're number one as well, baby. Nice to see you jumping in here. So looking down here, we want to look at the altcoins and see what is up or down by more than 10% because in cryptocurrency, that is what equates to volatility. This, you know, three or 4% is nothing happens on a regular daily basis. We got uh, extra guac jumping to the house as well. Moon Gang, what's up with that extra guac as usual? Uh, need some chips with that extra guac, I think. <laughs> need some uh, chips to dip. But anyways, going down here, nothing really happening. A lot of stuff is down. We got Maker. Oops, I scrolled a little bit farther than I wanted to on Maker. There we go. Got Maker here down 13% but down 10% compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum. And yeah, <laughs> it's just going all sorts of places. So not really a coin uh, that I would trade anyway, but just, you know, FYI, Maker is a little bit more volatile than the rest of the space today. We got Digibyte that's up, but not more than 10%. We got Zillica, which has had a pretty big run and was overbought, starting to come back down a little bit. I mentioned, uh, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday on the show, I mentioned with Zillica, it looks like if you take a look at its 
uh, chart on like TradingView or any charting service you may have, if it comes back down to its 50 period moving average and does not exceed that by the end of this month, that could be a potential buy point for this coin. It looks like this wants to continue up once Bitcoin cycle is finished to the downside. We will see, but uh, it's, you know, it looks a little bit more bullish than a lot of the other stuff that's out there basically. So take a look at Zillica. And uh, okay, Voice My Edition mentions the total two chart. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. I, I usually look at the total two chart on my own. I actually haven't looked at it this much on the show. So that's a good point. And we'll look, take a look at that. Plain Jane in the house. What up? What up? So anyway, Zillica is back down. Not too far compared to its gains. But it's, the reason why I like it so much is it's come up above its early to mid 2019 gains in terms of Bitcoin and market cap, I believe so in dollars as well, has a bunch of resistance coming up, but could be an interesting one to watch over the next few months. Scrolling down here, what else is going down or up? Not too much, not too much. You got Aave only up 9%, so not gonna take a look at that one because not more than 10%. And I think that does it for the list. So compared to Tuesday and Thursday, uh, not too much, volatility to com uh, today comparatively. So uh, Bitcoin dominance is also staying basically flat. So it is what it is. So let's take a look at the total two chart that uh, Trophy Dolphin or Voice My Ambition was mentioning, because I, I do think that's a good chart to take a look at. So I believe, well, actually, crypto. there we go. So this shows all of the cryptocurrency. So here we got the market cap, right? This is the total market cap for all crypto, which is uh, $269 billion. Bitcoin is 64% dominant. So this shows the remaining 30, what, 35% basically is what the total two is. And that should be $89 billion, should be about 35% of this uh, $269 billion, basically. So the total two chart shows you uh, the altcoins and how they are doing, right? Market cap is increasing with the altcoins. But if we take a look at Bitcoin dominance, dominance is flat. And this is on a weekly scale. Let's take a look on the daily, actually. Give us a little better idea. So Bitcoin dominance is still low enough that the altcoins should be able to have some pump, right? But it's not going down far enough for the altcoins to really have a good uh, altcoin season or, you know, even a mini one, right? But if we look at the total two, the total two on the daily, because we didn't look at that uh, actually, we looked at it on the weekly. And you can see here, it's pretty positive. So the altcoins, you know, they're not dumping basically, even though Bitcoin is starting to go down, Ethereum is starting to go down. These things are going down together um, for the most part, but the you know, market cap is relatively flat. So like I said, we haven't had too much of a big move here over the last 24 hours, but we have had some significant levels that have been uh, tested. So let's take a look here at this chart. And the first thing that I'll show on this chart is Ethereum, because I believe Ethereum is a little bit ahead of Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin's at about 94.50 and Ethereum Let's just take a look at that pattern because I talked about Ethereum either yesterday or on Tuesday. And what I mentioned to you guys at this at that time, it, Bitstamp is a shitty one because it has this big wick right here, which actually didn't happen for Ethereum. So I'm actually going to go back to the other one that I was using the other day, which was, I believe, uh, Binance because less wickage. There we go. So this triangle here, um, I mentioned to the private group yesterday, uh, as it was happening, right? Uh, if, for those of you who are, who are unaware, we have a private telegram group for uh, the people who uh, are in my group. And basically, I was showing you guys this in that chat last night, uh, 1am Japan time, went to bed right after that. But here you have this you know, symmetrical triangle, and you had it breaking down here last night, it was just breaking below uh, 240. And as soon as it got close to that, I was looking at, at it on the eight hour chart, actually. And once it was getting close to closing below here, that showed that we have uh, a lot of weakness in Ethereum. 
And Ethereum may be front running Bitcoin by just a smidge, by just a little bit. So just generally here, what can we say about this? Well, we can take this percentage here, which is about 10% or a little bit more. And we could say from the breakout point that this can come down about uh, around here, $219, $218. So that's the mid range target for Ethereum. Now that's a breakdown, whereas Bitcoin is not totally broken down yet, but it's definitely headed in that direction. I believe it's already fulfilled enough to call a high in the current cycle. Okay. So if we have a high here on day 21, that means we have basically quite a, a while left for the price to go down in terms of time. It couldn't just go sideways here for the rest of June, but I believe that Bitcoin will be going down. Now, the level that I was looking for for Bitcoin was in the low 9,000s for um, the downside. And last yesterday, it closed at 92.55. Definitely plenty uh, low enough for me to say that this is the beginning of the downtrend for Bitcoin. And we have this as the top for the current cycle. Okay. So we're looking for some more downside into this month. If we take a look on the weekly chart, just kind of zooming out and seeing what is what it's looking like in total. Basically, we have Bitcoin kind of riding on top of this green line at the moment. I don't think that will last. I do think it will come and test this 50 day or 50 week moving average here at 8,800 basically. And then once it gets below that, then it has the next chance to be caught somewhere between 78 and $8,300. Now, it really depends how fast Bitcoin comes down over the next few weeks, right? Coming into the end of this month. If Bitcoin starts having pretty large candles to the downside, then it could come back maybe slightly above this 100 week moving average here at about 72, 7,300, right? So there's a lot of possibilities for Bitcoin. It really just depends how much selling pressure uh, comes about. And if we take a look at volume here, Right, volume has been decreasing, and we're pretty still, pretty still pretty low volume. But if we get, start getting like a sell bar like this, you can start maybe seeing a uh, larger downside here. But we see here, right during that big collapse, right, it wasn't until you know the, the first few bars of the cycle going into its low were actually pretty normal, basically similar to what we're getting right now this week. It wasn't until that massive liquidity event you know from the stock market and in every single market because of the coronavirus that we saw massively high sell volume right so volume in general for bitcoin has stayed relatively low uh except for a few you know special points within last year and this year so a lot of it is just money sloshing around in an already existing market not a lot of new money coming into the market but sometimes we do get that so anyways we're looking for Bitcoin to stay, oops, we're looking for Bitcoin to stay mainly within this triangle, the orange lines here that's been, if I just zoom out really far, from the top of the bull market in 2017 to the top in 2019 to the most recent couple of tops just below 10,500, uh, right? We're looking to kind of consolidate within this area over the summer. Right. We might have another test of 10,500 and then another rejection, or we might even just only test like 9,000 next month and then another rejection and continue lower. So we have this possibility of accumulation period below 10,500 and more than likely above 6,000 uh, for sure, you know, in my opinion, more than likely in that area. So if you get any Bitcoin in the six to $7,000 range, buy the hell out of it, in my opinion. I highly doubt that we get anywhere towards the bottom of this triangle. It is possible if we did get, you know, sometime within this summer or late this year within the bottom of this area, the max, max, max area I would see is being down here towards about 4,500, but that would be another dream, another great scenario for people accumulating long-term. But again, higher lows if that happens anyways, so nothing to really worry about. The real thing that we're looking for towards um, the end of this year coming into next year is a break of 15,000, a break of 20,000, and then trying to reach up here to 27,000 sometime within 
the next calendar year. So if you look at a macro scale, right, accumulate anything under 10,000. Once we get above 15, things are going to get going good. So, you know, it is what it is. But for the, all of you guys who've been paying attention closely to the Bitcoin price and also to the crypto markets, you'll understand that that's uh, a good scenario. It's not something to really be worried about. Whereas I think most people right now, whenever Bitcoin's under 10,000, they're really, really skittish or they're really, really afraid of it. Uh, so any any dumps that we get here within the uh, next couple of weeks into July uh, should be times for celebration and for buying that dip. Uh, but I believe we have a lot further to go than we are currently right now. So let's take a look at the chat. Um, and what I'll do is I'll do this. And then I'll jump into here. There we go. So. <laughs> Extra Rock says, screw everything else, buy Bitcoin and Tesla, baby, rocket it to the moon. I like it. And uh, Divining Rod says, should I trade Bitcoin before drop and then rebuy when foreseen drop you speak of? <laughs> I like this. So uh, Divining Rod, uh, good, good question. I would say it depends on if you are using a uh, all of your funds to trade or just some of your funds. So my recommendation for people who are trading is never trade everything you have in Bitcoin. You want a HODL fund, holding fund, and you want a trading fund. And if you're doing any uh, like leverage, then maybe a separate leverage fund. So that would be three different funds at least that you're trading and maybe even an altcoin fund, right? It depends on how deep you are into the crypto game. So what I would usually say is if you have at least one Bitcoin or half a Bitcoin, probably put around 80%, you know, following the 80-20 principle, put 80% into a HODL or hold account, put it in cold storage, forget about it, don't even worry about it, don't touch it, just let it be and let it ride until we get to the highs of the bull market in the next couple of years. Then the other 20% or so, and if you have a lower amount of crypto, then maybe that percent will be closer to like 60-40 but the majority should be that what you're holding for the long term. Okay. So the other stuff that you're holding, let's say it's 20%, 40%, whatever it is. Yes. Then I would say, uh, basically at this point, it's a good time to be out of Bitcoin, wait for the drop in the next couple of weeks, then buy back in. I would say easy, easy to do wax on wax off. Uh, throughout this accumulation period. Now, that's one way to compound your Bitcoin. There's other ways to compound your Bitcoin, but that would be, you know, spot trading and swing trading at its simplest right there. So good question, Divining Rod. And um, <laughs> I like this one. Angela says, oh man, oh man, can't wait to buy some ignorant shit with the profits. I like it. It's good stuff. Yeah, wait till the top of the bull market so that you can then you can buy some really, really good ignorant stuff. <laughs> oh, and Tony the Tiger, Tony El Tigre uh, says, Moon Gang, I forgot that you're doing Friday shows again. Lol. Yes, I am. And we're doing call-ins today. So once I get maybe in about 10 minutes, once I get a decent portion of the subject uh, bit off, then I will be opening phone lines uh, or actually, you know, VoIP lines, voice over internet protocol lines. Basically, you guys can join me here either through video or audio. Uh, so yeah, good stuff. And I'll be doing that more on Fridays. And MLD says, Bitcoin going to drop quicker than George Bruno's testosterone levels. I like it. Perfect. And, and <laughs> yes, exactly. He has done. Perfect. So let's get into this subject today because I believe it's a subject that is a little bit controversial, actually because a lot of people have wildly different opinions on this. So I believe that Bitcoin will beat the S&P 500 and have some non-correlation to it within this year. Now, Bitcoin, if you look at it since its inception, the last 10 years, it has beat the S&P 500 hands down by a ton. So that's not really a bold prediction. I think the more bold prediction is that at some point it will be non-correlated somewhat to the S&P. Now, it's never going to be 100% non-correlated. There's always going to be some ebbs and flows between the two because a lot of the same humans are trading both markets. So psych psychologically, that's not going to be that different. Um, but, you know, just understand that there is going to be times when they're not going to be doing the same thing, even though right now they're both dumping at the same time. So let's just take a look at, uh, quickly at the S&P 500 chart so that you guys know what I'm talking about because we looked already at the Bitcoin chart. 
which is here, right? So just let's take a look over the last couple of weeks or months, right? So we had this top, well, actually let's look from the beginning of this year. So right here, Bitcoin, December, 2019, started coming up here. And let's just look at percentages just for an off glance look. Percentage wise, 60% or so increase from December to February. Then Bitcoin had a massive drop, right? 63%. Then it's had a massive comeback up about 172%, right? To that top. And now recently over the last couple of days, let's just say over the last day, a 10% decline. Okay. So pretty interesting, you know, ebbs and flows over this year. Largely Bitcoin is still up though from the beginning of this year, right? Bitcoin price started here at about uh, $6,700, $6,800. So from $6,800 to where it is currently, Bitcoin is up 38% on the year compared to dollars. Now let's take a look at the S&P. What did it do over the same period of time? And then we'll actually look at the actual correlation, correlation metric, the correlation coefficient uh, between the two. But you can see the S&P dumping pretty hard here. I said on the Tokyo crypto show the other day around this area here, 3150. Uh, if it, the S&P were to break below that on a daily close, it would come down a lot further and therefore it has done that. And if we just take a look here from December, 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 December. So December, the early part of the year, right? December to February, the S&P went up about 10%. So compared to Bitcoin's 60% increase during that same period of time, Bitcoin was beating the S&P as it usually does. Then once we had the crash here at the end of February, basically similar timing to Bitcoin's crash, of course, it doesn't crash quite as hard because the stock market is a lot more stable than crypto. So we had a 35% decline and then another increase here from about 47%. And year on year, from when from January first until now, the S and P is down how much? Roughly six point four eight percent. So you know these ebbs and flows have been similar since the end of February until now. The S and P and Bitcoin have kind of gone along the same path, but from the beginning of the year, you know S and P is down uh, six point four eight percent, roughly or six and a half percent. And Bitcoin is, so S&P is down, Bitcoin is up. How much again did I say? 38%. So I like that. <laughs> I like Bitcoin. Uh, so, you know, Bitcoin does have a lot more volatility to it, but it's ten, it is tending to appreciate in price throughout this year rather than the S&P is still going down. Now, let's take a look at the actual correlation here. Right, so if we take a look at this chart, I put the correlation coefficient thing here at the bottom. We'll just kind of make it big and I have it on gold right now, but I'll put it on the SNP. We'll go through a few different things in terms of data for this, just so you guys can get the information and we can open up the phone lines. We can all talk about it or whoever wants to. So if we go here on the weekly chart first, Bitcoin compared to the S&P. So if I just zoom out here, this data down here, this red wavy type thing is the correlation coefficient. And we have the S&P 500 here, uh, the SPX down here. And so when the correlation is close to one, that means these two are exactly the same or they are moving in tandem. When, the, uh, when it's close to minus one, that means they are wildly different. So we can see here since February, as I mentioned, when we were looking at both price charts, they have been more and more correlated since that drop uh, in er late February, early March, right? So we we're in a period of correlation, roughly a period of 126 days, right? So that's a high correlation period. If we just kind of scroll out to all of Bitcoin's history, that we have available to us on Bitstamp from September of 2001, you can see that this does ebb and flow quite a lot. Of course, the majority of the time so far in Bitcoin's history, it has had a closer to positive correlation to the S&P 500 than it has a negative correlation. 
right? If we look at the biggest chunks, we have this correlation here from November, December of 2016 to July of 2018. Their correlation was positive with the S&P 500 and Bitcoin for about 574 days, right? So almost two years of positive correlation. And we haven't had an equal amount to the downside in terms of negative correlation. The longest negative correlation we've had, and this isn't even consistently, is about one year, right? And this was in 2014, 2015, right? When Bitcoin was going down, but the S&P 500 at that time was continuing to go up. So you can just see that this is not uh, always correlated. So I think there's a lot of people out there who say that S&P and Bitcoin are continually correlated, but they have their ebbs and flows. Now, if you want to look, I, I don't like Coinbase, but they have good data that they put out here on Medium, which is, right, if you take a look at the correlation between S&P and uh, 500 and Bitcoin, it has its ebbs and flows, times when it is, times when it is not. Then if you look at these other ones, we can actually test this on the chart, right? So the correlation between the S&P 500 and the Dow uh, Jones Industrial Average is quite highly correlated compared to Bitcoin and the S&P. So let's take a look and see if that is true, right? So let's just look at the Dow Jones. Nigerian Don's in the house. Nice to see you jumping in here. Nigerian Don says, hey, Charlie, I'm going to trade 40% of my Bitcoin to gold. Is it a good idea? Uh, for how long? <laughs> I would say no. Um, but do what you do. I, I, I would rather be in Bitcoin than in gold long term, in my opinion. But gold is good if it's physical gold, <laughs> right? That's the other key. But if we take a look here at the S&P 500 uh, versus the Dow Jones, they are mainly in tandem lockstep, very close to one in terms of correlation here. And so if you guys want to learn more about the correlation coefficient, there's a very good article here on, uh, on Investopedia, and I will throw this quickly into the chat so that you guys can see this. Remco is saying exactly that right there. Um, correlation of minus one is the opposite trend. No, yes, exactly. A correlation of zero is um, orthogonal. I don't even know how to pronounce that word, orthogonality. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so basically zero is uh, kind of a wash. Uh, minus one is opposite. Plus one is highly correlated. Exactly. And if you look at that thing on Investopedia, it explains the details there. So let's take a look here, though. So the Dow Jones right here is highly correlated, right, for the majority of its history. And then if we take a look at something else in the crypto world, right? We can take a look at Ethereum versus uh, Bitcoin. So actually what I'm going to do down here is I got to change this to say Bitcoin and find it here on Bitstamp. All right. And then we'll change this here to Ethereum. Don't really care about how the Dow Jones and uh, how much the Dow Jones is correlated with Bitcoin or not, at least not today. And we can see Ethereum and Bitcoin for the mo most part are highly correlated. They do have, they did have this time here in September of last year where they were uh, very close, uh, where they were getting close to zero. But for the most part, they're usually pretty close to one and pretty close to each other. Okay. So you can just see the differences there. And this article is, I think, a pretty good one just showing the differences. And this came out a little bit earlier this year. Oh, shit. I didn't show that. God damn it. All right. Here we go again. <laughs> Here's Ethereum to Bitcoin. Their correlation, like I said, is close to one. And right, it came down here one point close to zero, but for the most part, highly correlated. Then we take a look here at uh, the S&P versus Bitcoin. And you can see that Bitcoin, right, uh, started to come back harder, uh, better than the S&P and has continued to do better uh, over this year than uh, Bitcoin has done better. All right. And if you want to take it a different look at it. You can also look at here. This is correlation compared to returns, right? So uh, it doesn't tell you which one is returning better. It just tells you if their returns are negative or positive. So you can see here in January of 2017, uh, or sorry, no, 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 November of 2016, their, prof their returns were highly uncorrelated. Whereas here in February of 2018, 
their returns were a lot closer to each other. So you can take a look here at coinmetrics.io correlation charts. And I'll throw that in the chat if anybody wants to go over there as well and take a look at this info for yourself. So yeah, and um, let's move over to a couple other data points, right? One data point here is Bitcoin's uptime, right? Just how much faith can we have in Bitcoin? Because it does have a lot of volatility, but it tends to be tends to do uh, a lot better in terms of having better returns than the S&P over a longer period of time. So how much can you trust the Bitcoin network? Well, Bitcoin has been functional for 99.98 whatever percent of its history, right? So it's been highly, uh, you know, functional. We have two downtime events of less than a day. <laughs> of course, the first one in 2010 was when somebody tried to print 92.2 billion Bitcoins <laughs> over two addresses, right? Um, they failed because within that eight hour period, uh, Bitcoin was forked and therefore those coins no longer are in circulation. But that was one big bug, one big uh-oh. So that happened a couple of times in Bitcoin's history, but you can take a look at this site for yourself. I'll throw it in the, in the chat a little bit later so that you can see that. Another place you can go to compare uh, Bitcoin versus gold, Bitcoin versus the S&P is skewanalytics.com. And so you can see here, you know, those charts on top of each other, but basically no, no different than what we already said before. And I think Nigerian Don was mentioning gold before. So one thing we can also do on TradingView is we can take a look at gold. And we can put that in the correlation there. We can look at Bitcoin and we can see when they have correlation and when they don't. And similar to the stock market, it's a, been a wild ride between the two. Now, Bitcoin here is closer to gold recently, but yeah, uh, take a look at that data for yourself if you are interested in comparing the two. But my, in my opinion, I like Bitcoin better than gold long term just because it has more volatility. It has more potential to go higher to the upside. Okay. The last thing that I'm going to show is actually this Bloomberg report that I discussed with you guys here, when was this? Maybe in uh, late April, so a little more than a month ago. And a couple of interesting things, right? If we zoom in here to this chart, one interesting thing is the S&P is in a different phase in terms of trend than Bitcoin is. So if you take a look here, right? Bitcoin is the white line here, right? This white area here, the S&P 500, is this uh, yellow line here. And if you take a look at their recent lows, Bitcoin's low of 3,100 was here. And then the next low was 3,800, right? Whereas the S&P, the yellow line here, had a low here under 2,000 points and then had a lower low under uh, 2,000, closer to 1,000 points, right? So what does this say? Bitcoin is still in a bull market. The S&P is not. As simple as that. So the S&P had a long period of growth. Now we're starting a, a larger decline, a downtrend, whereas Bitcoin ha already had its downtrend, um, ha still in a little bit of a downtrend since 2019, but has more room for growth than the S&P. So that's another reason why the S&P will not be Bitcoin uh, over the next few years as well. So that's the main data that I wanted to take a look at today. There's a lot more that I could probably talk about on here. One more thing, if you want to discuss this kind of stuff uh, with the group, uh, my Telegram group, the private group I mentioned, you guys can come over here to cultivatecrypto.com slash shop, and you can come over and join uh, the Telegram service, or you can just do a one-on-one -on -one consultation if you want to recalibrate your crypto strategy, or if you're brand new to crypto, to make one in the first place. So there's that. There's a few links there. Oops, I totally mashed that one up, I think. Um, anywho, it's all good. So let's take a look here, uh, in terms of if anybody wants to jump in and talk about this subject towards the end of the show, more than happy to discuss this with anybody and everybody who has an interest in doing so. So there's the stream yards link jump on. If you want to discuss this topic a little bit more, or if you want to discuss anything else, you can ask me any kind of questions you want. Uh, everything is free game. Uh, if you're an asshole, I'll delete you though. <laughs> uh, so 
Let's see here. Angela says, curious why anyone would purchase Ethereum when the upside for Bitcoin is much greater at this point in terms of dollars, yes, but not in terms of percentage. Always on the fence about whether I should sell my Ethereum, be more aggressive accumulating Bitcoin. What I would say is I would have a healthy distribution in both. So let's take a look at the chart here, Angela, because that's a good question. But I would say my price target for Bitcoin, right, is higher in terms of dollars, but in terms of percentage, it is not. So if I just zoom out on Bitcoin, I'm going to show you guys this chart here in a second. And in the meantime, while I'm sharing this, if anybody jumps on, just uh, sit in the waiting room and then I'll get you on here. Um, if nobody calls, then I'll just keep talking about these types of questions from the chat themselves. So let me share the screen here. Into infinity and beyond. Anyways, so what would percent the percentage gain be for Bitcoin, right? Basically be a 10 times to go from here to 100K, right? something around these lines. So it'd be a, a close to a thousand percent increase if Bitcoin were to get to 100K. Now my call for Ethereum is 6,000 to $10,000, right? And wait for some time for that to load. Currently Ethereum, I could even zoom out to see those numbers is gonna be a little bit of time. But for Ethereum right now from 200 and let's say 30 bucks, to let's say just 6,000, the lower end of my target, that is a 2,500% return. So actually double the amount of return potential than Bitcoin going to 100,000, right? If Ethereum were to go to 10,000, that would be twice as much as that almost, that would be a 4,200% uh, return, right? So a 40 times return. So a 20 to 40 times return or 25 to 40 times return versus a 10 times, maybe a 15 times return for Bitcoin, Ethereum more than likely, in my opinion, has more upside than Bitcoin. But there is one caveat to that, which is we know that Bitcoin is going to move the market up, right? And Ethereum is 99.9% .9 likely to join it and in also increase at a very good rate, maybe even better than Bitcoin in terms of percentage. But if things go south or things go sideways or things don't go quite how we expect, we at least know that Bitcoin will have the most stability. You know, talking about crypto and stability is a little bit of a, uh, you know, funny there. But in terms of uh, stability, Bitcoin will be the main thing to hold because it will have the first group that it's pumping in. So what I recommend for people is at this point in time, have a majority of your holdings in Bitcoin, especially if you're brand new to crypto. If you've been in crypto a long time and you already have enough Bitcoin, then yeah, definitely buy a lot more Ethereum. But if you haven't been in Bitcoin all that long, then get Bitcoin maybe 60-40. Buy 60% Bitcoin, 40% Ethereum. Something like that is good. You can do 80-20, 80% Bitcoin, 20% Ethereum. I would say for the people who are going uh, more than 50% in Ethereum and less than 50% in Bitcoin, you'll probably have wanted to be in the Bitcoin game for at least one year so that you can kind of get used to the market, understand what's going on, and then, uh, you know, do that as well. But if you go through a whole bull cycle and then one bear cycle as well, you know, from an extreme to an extreme, which we had from, if you go like, for example, from beginning of bull market in 2015 to the end of the bull market in 2017 to the end of the bear market in 2018, if you do that, so 2016 or 2015 to 2018, if you've been through like a three or four year cycle, then yeah, you're going to probably start getting into some altcoins and some other things because the younger cryptocurrency is, the more likely it has more upside if it survives. Now, Ethereum, we know will survive and do very, very well over the next cycle. So that's almost no problem. We can heavily weight uh, our account in Ethereum if we like. We know Bitcoin's going to do fine, but some of the altcoins, right, they can do a lot of different things. They can do great for some short periods of time. They can do terrible for other periods of time. So we really don't know with those, especially once you get past the top 20 or 30 altcoins on coin market cap, it starts to become more and more of a gamble. So those coins, I would say, play a lot more short term. Don't play them on a long term basis uh, unless, you know, you want to hold a lot of altcoins <laughs> and that's totally your prerogative. But yeah, exactly. Uh, voice my ambition right now is still a very good buy for Ethereum. I think anything for Ethereum under $500 is a good buy. Anything under $300 is a very good buy. Anything under $200 is an excellent buy. Uh, excellent buy for Ethereum. 
Nigerian Don says the Tesla stock was pumping lately. It was at 1K at some point. Interesting. I haven't looked at Tesla in a long time. Let me pull up that one just because I'm pulling up charts now and doing that. I could talk about you know the correlation between other things, but uh, yeah. Tesla wrong. Oh yeah, it's gotten close. So let me share the screen here. Boom. So Tesla here, right, had gotten up to looks like just above a thousand dollars, right? And it came up to as high in February, just along with everything else in the stock market, <clears throat> came up to 944, jumped down to 353 and came back up here with everything else. Broke its previous high, which is positive a little bit. But what percentages is that? So for on the year, Tesla started around here, around $400. So Tesla's up 140% on the year. I like it. I like it a lot. It's actually doing extremely well. And it was up 140% before the decline. It came down about 63%. So not so bad. So Tesla doing amazing, you know, compared to a lot of these other uh, assets and coins and everything. So uh, good stuff. And um, yeah, you know, stick with the winners. That's what I say. Uh, a lot of the tech companies are less affected than a lot of, uh, you know, other things in the stock market like, you know, uh, airlines, cruise ships, all those types of things. No problem, Angelo. Extra box says I got in at $700 for Tesla, not selling until 1500. Good, good. And let's see here. Mo's in the house. Nice to see you jumping in here, Mo. I'm doing about 65% in Bitcoin, 30% in Ethereum and about 5% in Chainlink. I like it. Yeah, and make sure, like what I usually tell people is make sure that you, when you're doing other coins, right, besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, you know, this is a really good example. Just make sure that you have any altcoins that you have, you know, make sure that they're not a majority of your position, like, you know, Mo has here, but then also make sure that you have few, a few enough that you can actually pay attention to their price chart. Like, for example, you don't probably don't want to go more than 10 cryptocurrencies. I would say probably stay under five. Once you get about around eight to 15 different cryptocurrencies, you can't pay attention to them and you don't know which ones you have. You forget about it. You don't know when to get in and get out. So Mo here is actually a pretty safe strategy um, in my opinion of, um, you know, taking a bit of a gamble on a younger coin that has a lot of upside and then, um, you know, waiting majority in Bitcoin. I think that's a pretty good way to look at it. So yeah, that's good. But um, let's take a look here. If there was, I think there was one other thing that I had in terms of data that I was going to mention. Otherwise, we'll wrap it up. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. This is what I was thinking of showing. Actually, another one interesting thing, because I usually, right, I don't usually quote the mainstream media right? Why did I talk about Bloomberg specifically today, right? So Bloomberg, they're a little bit different than other media types when it comes to, uh, you know, talking about cryptocurrency. Actually, I had a huge grain of salt for Bloomberg until August of last year. And now I actually respect their opinion a little bit more, which is why I showed you guys um, this thing here. Let me show you. Uh, Mo says, when I got into crypto, in 2017, I was holding about 40 coins. <laughs> yeah, it happens to a lot of people. And now I'm down to four. Much, much better. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be much better off. Oh, that's interesting, Stephen. Uh, Exodus Wallet lets you track alts with a very nice interface. Yeah, and Coinigy does, or Coinigy does as well, I believe. So yeah, just make sure that you uh, are able to track it. And if you are having multiple altcoins, make sure that you do it on a you know frequent basis. Uh, I think, yeah, if you're, if you're a person who's trading a lot or focused on it, then yeah, it's no problem. It'd do what you know you can handle. But let me show the screen here and I'll do it a little bit differently here. I'll do it through StreamYards. I'll just share my entire screen. The thing I wanna show you guys, oh, that doesn't look so happy. 
So here is the Bitcoin maturation leap. That was the chart I was showing you guys with the Bloomberg chart showing you the difference between where Bitcoin and the S&P is. The S&P is at the beginning of a downtrend. The big Bitcoin is at the beginning of an uptrend. But why should you pay attention to Bloomberg, right? It's a mainstream media source and not always a good source of information. Uh, a lot of you know CNBC, uh, Goldman Sachs, they suck when it comes to giving out information about Bitcoin, right? Goldman Sachs goes through a lot of FUD. So when Goldman Sachs says Bitcoin sucks, buy it. When Goldman Sachs says Bitcoin is going to do well, sell it. <laughs> but Bloomberg actually had this thing, which I saved. And I think it will pull up here on the screen. But I saved this picture, but I cannot for the life of me find the article that I got it from. But this came out in August of 2019. So this was actually something I was a little bit skeptical of, but it agreed with what I had seen in my chart back last August, which was that Bitcoin's price was going down and that we had the peak in the end of June, beginning of July for 2019 in terms of about $14,000 Bitcoin. So when I saw this around August, when the price of Bitcoin was around 11,000, I'd been telling you guys on this channel and a lot of the guys in my private telegram group, I told you all that Bitcoin was going down at least into September maybe even longer, but this chart surprised me from Bloomberg, which I thought, mm, I'm going to take this as a huge grain of salt, but they ended up being very, very correct, right? Which was extended consolidation likely in Bitcoin. And that was at 11,700. So around the time that I was telling you guys that Bitcoin was going down. So I was like, okay, this piqued my interest enough so that I saved this information. And you can see they measured this yellow line here by Bitcoin 30 day volatility. And then they have the Bitcoin price here, but you can see different periods where they had downtrends, you know, compared to these areas. And so anyways, they were correct, right? So extended consolidation likely in Bitcoin. How much consolidation did we get? Well, we've gotten almost a year of consolidation in the price of Bitcoin, right? Uh, I think <laughs> it only has about another month <laughs> or, or two before we can say it's been a whole year of consolidation to the downside. So, you know, it is what it is. Hold on a second here. Louis thought he heard something in the hallway. So it is what it is. Hello. He's kind of going into the into the green screen a little bit. Don't bark. Let's keep him on my lap. That way he won't freak out. So Scott says, direct correlation between hex ownership and less sexual intercourse. <laughs> oh, man. Coming back to the great comments. I love it. I love it. Uh, MLD is saying, hex is a scam, bro. Exactly. Uh, I just want to put in these comments here. This is great. Uh, Doggo wants to warn us not to buy Hex. Exactly. Uh, Michael Benson, nice jumping in here. Everybody smash that like button. Hit subscribe as well. Uh, you can see that in the bottom here, here on the ticker. Hit subscribe, smash the like, buy Bitcoin, buy Ethereum. I think your life will be better if you do those four things. Uh, but Michael Benson says, Charlie, what would happen if a trillion dollars was pumped into Bitcoin all at once? That would be an interesting thing to watch. I, I don't think that's going to happen, buddy. But if it happened, I think people might just lose their goddamn minds. <laughs> I think that's probably the best way to put it. Uh, you got a trillion dollars over there? You think the Fed's going to put a trillion dollars in? Uh, the, there was Fed Day the other day, right, when they are talking about all that stuff. And, um, you know, they're going to print some more money. So, hell yeah, let's get Bitcoin to be the... Uh, the, what's backing the US dollar. We'll put it on the Bitcoin standard instead of the gold standard. It'd be good shit. So, all right, guys, thank you very much for, uh, <laughs> yeah, if the Fed can create it and they'll get a massive slippage, right? When they put it in on the exchange or if they buy it OTC. <laughs> so they won't get all the Bitcoin that they should have gotten at that trillion dollar mark, unfortunately. And uh, there's only 21 million Bitcoin, so they can't rule them all anyways. So guys, thank you very much for coming in today. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. It is our Friday stream, a little bit more relaxed than we usually do, but some good information nonetheless. And Nigerian Don says, 
he would celebrate this with much, much, much alcohol, which is, you know, whatever floats your boat, uh, alcohol, weed, whatever it is, it is good. So, all right. John says he's going live uh, once I'm done. So peace out, guys. Live long and prosper. Enjoy John's show. He has another one with uh, one of, another good show lined up for today. So enjoy that. And uh, I'll see you guys on Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern on Moon Gang. Until then, have a great weekend, y'all.